amphibolite A -M -F is a metamorphic rock that contains amphibole, especially the species hornblende and actinolite, as well as plagioclase, a hollow crystalline plutonic igneous rock composed primarily of hornblende amphibole is called a hornblendite, which is usually a crystal cumulate rock. Rocks with an GT, 90% amphiboles which have a feldspar ground mass may be a lamprefire. Amphibolite is a grouping of rocks composed mainly of amphibole and plagioclase feldspars with little or no quartz. It is typically dark colored and heavy, with a weakly foliated ashistos structure. The small flakes of black and white in the rock often give it a salt and pepper appearance. Amphibole Amphibolites need not be derived from metamorphosed mafic rocks, because metamorphism creates minerals based entirely upon the chemistry of the protolith. Certain dirty marls and volcanic sediments may actually metamorphose to an amphibolite of assemblage. Deposits containing dolomite and siderite also readily yield amphibolites, especially where there has been a certain amount of contact metamorphism by adjacent granitic masses. Metamorphosed basalts create orthoamphibolites and other chemically appropriate lithologies create paraamphibolites. Tremolite, while it is a metamorphic amphibole, is derived most usually from highly metamorphosed ultramafic rocks, and thus tremolite talcists are not generally considered as amphibolites. Orthoamphibolites versus paraamphibolites. Metamorphic rocks composed primarily of amphibole, albite with subordinate epidote, soycite, chloride, quartz, sphene, and accessory leucoxene. Ilmenite and magnetite which have a protolith of an igneous rock are known as orthoamphibolites. Paraamphibolites will generally have the same equilibrium mineral assemblage as orthoamphibolites with more biotite and may include more quartz, albite and depending on the protolith more calcite, aragonite and wollastonite. Often the easiest way to determine the true nature of an amphibolite is to inspect its field relations relationships, especially whether it is interfingered, with other sediments, especially grey whackers and other poorly sorted sediments. If the amphibolite appears to transgress apparent protolith bedding surfaces it is an orthoamphibolite, as this suggests it was a dike. Picking a silent thin metamorphosed lava flows may be more troublesome. Thereafter, whole rock geochemistry will suitably identify ortho from paraamphibolites. The word metabasalt was thus coined, largely to avoid the confusion between orthoamphibolites and paraamphibolites. While not a true metamorphic rock name, as it infers an origin, it is a useful term. Amphibolite facies. Amphibolites define a particular set of temperature and pressure conditions known as the amphibolite facies. However, caution must be applied here before embarking on metamorphic mapping based on amphibolites alone. Firstly, for an amphibolite to be classed as a metamorphic amphibolite, it must be certain that the amphibole in the rock is a prograde metamorphic product and not a retrograde grade metamorphic product. For instance, actinolite amphibole is a common product of retrograde metamorphism of basalts at greenish phases conditions. Often, this will take on the crystal form and habit of the original protolith assemblage. Actinolite pseudomorphically replacing pyroxene is an indication that the amphibolite may not represent the peak metamorphic grade in the amphibolite phases. Actinolite schists are often the result of hydrothermal alteration of metasomatism, and thus may not necessarily 
be a good indicator of metamorphic conditions when taken in isolation. Secondly, the microstructure and crystal size of the rock must be appropriate. Amphibolite phases conditions are experienced at temperatures in excess of 500 degrees Celsius and pressures less than 1.2 gigapascals, well within the ductile deformation field. Nisic texture may occur nearby, if not then myelinite zones, foliations and ductile behavior, including stretching lineations may occur. While it is not impossible to have remnant protolith mineralogy, this is rare. More common is to find phenocrysts of pyroxene, olivine, plagioclase and even magmatic amphiboles such as pargasite rhombohedra, pseudomorphed by horn blend amphibole. Original magmatic textures, especially crude magmatic layering in layered intrusions, is often preserved. Amphibolite faces equilibrium mineral assemblages of various protolith rock types consist of basalt orthoamphibolite, horn blend, actinolite plus or minus albite plus or minus biotite plus or minus quartz plus or minus accessories, often remnant green schist faces as assemblages, including, notably, chlorite, high magnesia basalts, as orthoamphibolite but may contain anthophilite, AMG rich amphibole, ultramafic rocks, tremolite, asbestiform amphibole, talc, pyroxene, wallastonite, prograde metamorphic olivine, sedimentary paraamphibolite, horn blend, actinolite plus or minus albite plus or minus biotite plus or minus quartz plus or minus garnet, pellites, quartz, orthoclase plus or minus albite plus or minus biotite plus or minus actinolite plus or minus garnet plus or minus storolite plus or minus ilimonite. Amphibolite phases is usually a product of Barovian phases sequence or advanced to Bukamar phases sequence metamorphic trajectories. Amphibolite phases is a result of continuing burial and thermal heating after green schist phases is exceeded. Further burial and metamorphic compression will lead to a clogged phases metamorphism. With more advanced heating, the majority of rocks begin melting in excess of 650 to 700 degrees Celsius in the presence of water. In dry rocks, however, additional heat may result in granulite phases conditions. Uralite. Uralites are particular hydrothermally altered pyroxenites. During autogenic hydrothermal circulation, the primary mineralogy of pyroxene and plagioclase, etc., has altered to actinolite and saussurite. The texture is distinctive. The pyroxene altered to fuzzy, radially arranged actinolite pseudomorphically after pyroxene, and saussuritized plagioclase, epidioriate. The archaic term epidioriate is sometimes used to refer to a metamorphosed orthoamphibolite with a protolith of diorite, gabbro or other mafic intrusive rock. In epidioriate the original clinipyroxene has been replaced by the fibrous amphibole uralite, uses. Amphibolite was a favorite material for the production of adzes in the Central European Early Neolithic. Amphibolite is a common dimension stone used in construction, paving, facing of buildings, especially because of its attractive textures, dark color, hardness and polishability and its ready availability.